Just as in the past we have been witnessing the strong bond between Khilafat and the Jamaat and have been consuming the fruit of this relationship if we maintain a strong relationship with Allah the Almighty then we will continue to have even more fruit. <clears throat> the new site where this Jalsa is being held today is a new stage to which Allah has conveyed us because of our becoming his humble servants and remaining steadfast in loyalty and sincerity. It is a well-placed 460-acre site named Bawe Ahmad, close to the town, in fact, on the junction of three towns, or rather four towns, and close to highway. Indeed, some years before, Ghana Jamaat could not have even imagined that it would have been able to acquire such a well-placed and large piece of land. It is as a result of this sincerity and loyalty of the Ahmadis of Ghana Jamaat with Khilafat and being knit as links in one chain that the Almighty Allah has blessed you with this reward. So as I said before, all this is because of the promise made by Allah to the promised Messiah al-Islam, namely, I am with you and your followers. As long as each one of us maintain this bond with sincerity, loyalty, and fidelity, we will continue to witness these scenes of progress of the Jamaat. Let no one permit this relationship to fade away I have great expectations from Ghana and it, all, it is always my prayer that may you always march forward. Perhaps these expectations are due to the fact that I spent a part of my life here. When I was here, I did not for a moment think that I would return permanently to Pakistan. <laughs> At that time, the economic condition of Ghana was also not so healthy, rather it was most poor. Nevertheless, I did not think of abandoning this country. In a way, you could say that I considered myself to be a Ghanaian. <laughs> Where you were, there I was. I tried to be a part of Ghana's progress. So as I said, I have great expectations from you because the closer the relation, relations are with someone, the higher is the, expect, uh, the standard of one's expectations. Even though due to the office I hold now, my relation with each Ahmadi and each country is and should be equal. All are my loved ones. Whoever excels in virtues makes me happy. It is my prayer and burning desire that each Jamaat should excel other Jamaat in their devotion and loyalty in their relationship with Allah and in their sacrifices. As a sign of this loyalty, we can see this loyalty and devotion. Today we can see that almost 300 Khudam have come all the way from Burkina Faso on bicycles just to be a part of this auspicious occasion. And so as to benefit from the Khilafat celebrations. This shows the high regard and esteem you hold for Khilafat, or every, every Ahmadi hold for the Khilafat. 
then how is it possible that I do not reciprocate with the same feeling? Therefore, Ahmadis who have come from neighboring countries should not be disappointed or duly anxious that I have become totally Ghanaian. <laughs> I make every effort and, and I pray that I should be everyone's and should pray for everyone. The bond between Khilafat and Jamaat is such that each sincere Ahmadi is the Khalifa's beloved. But before I became Khalifa, if there was any reference to Africa, I always praised the people of Ghana. You could say that I acted as representative and ambassador of Ghana. I always say that I have never had a bad experience with any Ghanaian in general and never ever with a Ghanaian Ahmadi in particular. I always found them to be gentle and loyal. So today, if I praise Ghanaian Ahmadis, it is their right to merit this praise. I would be ungrateful were I not to thank them for this attitude that they maintained with me even before my appointment to Khilafat. The bond of relationship after that is quite obvious to every Ahmadi. This passion and feeling, this passion and feeling continue to grow and gather strength. Today, there will be many Ahmadis sitting before me who are newcomers and many who were either very young when I was here or were born after I left. To them, I would like to mention that early Ahmadis such as Madhi Appa, Imam al Haj Saleh, Momen Kore, and so many others understood the teachings of the Jamaat fully and having understood it, offered sacrifices for its sake. I hope Ghana Jamaat is trying to publish the history of Ghana Jamaat. If not, the early history has not been published <coughs> as yet. It should be planned. I would request Amir Sahib to do it. In any case, these people always remain sincere and loyal to Khilafat and the Jamaat. They were ready to respond positively at every beck and call for the Khalifa. They fulfill their covenant of bath to the promised Messiah al Islam and did full justice to it when they extended their salam or greetings of peace to the Imam of the age. They always advanced forth with the message of peace. Therefore, you who are born Ahmadis, you can never repay this noble example of your elders with your thanks. True gratitude demands that just as they were always ready to sacrifice their lives and their wealth and never allowed a breach in their oath of allegiance, you too should fulfill your pledge and never break any promise. Only then you, <coughs> would you become a source of contentment for their souls. If your ancestors vied with each other in accepting Ahmadiyyat, then to maintain these pioneers firmly in that foremost rank, you too will have to work just as hard in putting fresh life in your prayers and maintaining your links with the nizam e jamaat the organization of the Jamaat. If you do not do so, you will be a source of shame for your ancestors. Therefore, always remember that you have to tread along the footsteps of your elders and scale new heights in your loyalty and do justice to your oath of allegiance.